Excellent. So we have a 10 minute lightning talk, I would say here. 10 minutes is not a lot of time to cover TensorFlow. And after that, we have a 10 minute break. And after that, I'm going to do a 50 minute huge speech on TPUs and what is machine learning and how do we use machine learning at Google and also how do we do distributed TensorFlow. So if you're really interested in understanding more the nuts and bolts of TensorFlow, you should definitely catch that section. Because right now we're just going to focus on getting you started and the resources that you can use. So uh, what is TensorFlow then? How many of you have used TensorFlow? About 10%. So I hope it's going to be beefed up a bit after today's session. So it's a fla fast, flexible, and scalable open source machine learning library, blah, 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 blah. It is actually the machine learning library <laughs> that we use at Google for all machine learning purposes. And it's exactly the same thing we have open source as we have inside of Google. There is no difference. People think that we're keeping something secret inside of Google and we can only use that thing, but it, that's not true. It's actually built on the same kind of infrastructure. It's only one single difference, and that's that the RPC protocol between processes is a bit different in a Google said data center as opposed to just a data center outside, so the RPC protocol is a bit different. That's the only thing. No magic sauce from a machine learning perspective. TensorFlow is used, uh, we built it to be uh, usable for both research as well as production environment. There's rigorous testing going on between each release of uh, TensorFlow and we put out a new release approximately every six to eight weeks. Uh, we have about a thousand contributors, so it's not a Google thing, it's actually an open source, everyone can participate in this project. And also the one thing that we've recognized is that obviously uh, training on T CPU, TPU, and GPU that we'll talk about more in the next session is really important, but when it comes to deployment, uh, we gotta support these smaller uh, device models as well, Android, iOS, and also Raspberry Pi. It's all released under Apache 2.0, so it's a very open um, framework. We uh, open sourced this back in 2014. As you saw, as you see here, the number of machine learning models at Google slowly grew, and then when we released TensorFlow, obviously there is this hockey stick uh, kind of uh, traction upwards. Every single service you essentially use from Google nowadays is built, has models, machine learning models which are built on TensorFlow. And if you've heard, Google is now an AI first company. We used to be a mobile first company, and now we're an AI first company. So this is very, very important to us. So therefore, TensorFlow has a lot of investment going on in making this uh, work. So let's um, actually just one minute talk about what machine learning is. So we have a social experiment that's going to be very awkward for me. Hopefully not so awkward for you. So if I say TensorFlow, an awkward silence, right? Because you have no idea what you're going to respond to that. But if I say TensorFlow, <laughs> correct. There you go. And, and what we actually did, this is an introduction to machine learning. So I fed an example to you, which was the training data. Um, oh, it's supposed to say TensorFlow here. So the input data is TensorFlow. I fed that to your model. You responded with nothing, right? And that was awkward for me. And then I show the next picture, I show rocks, and now you know, you take the loss function between nothing and rocks, and you said, oh, that was a mistake. I should have responded with uh, rocks instead. So the next time you actually put out rocks there. So everyone get that? We kind of have a, something we feed into the model, and then we get a right answer, and then we adapt the model to be able to, um, to work. Cool, how do I get started with TensorFlow then? Well, the best thing is to go to tensorflow.org, get started. Um, here you have all of the stuff. We recently converted uh, to use, perhaps I shouldn't do this, I don't know if I should do this, uh, to use uh, Colabs. So you can actually go in here and if you, if you go into tensorflow.org, develop, getting started with eager execution, uh, you can see these things and then you can click on these notebooks and you can actually get an executable notebook directly from the website. So there's no installation requirement, no nothing. We're converting all of the things to comply to this kind of format. So it's really easy to get started. And cool, the other thing you should know is that TensorFlow is built on many different layers in, in its architecture. The hardware, the distributed execution engine, the Python front end. When you decode TensorFlow nowadays, you should use one of these high level 
APIs. And that's exactly what this getting started experience is also teaching you. So that's really important because there are many ways of configuring machine learning workloads. Sometimes advanced researchers, they need to go to this, down to this level, but that's definitely not a place where you should start. To build a model is really simple. This is a, an example in Keras. You put a sequential model, you add a couple of layers, and then you can train and fit and evaluate this model. And then you can build this kind of cool uh, classifiers that can take pixel inputs and then through these weights and layers determine if it's a cat or a dog. So I said, uh, training is one thing, then deployment is another thing. And to deploy on these mobile devices, we have a component of TensorFlow called TensorFlow Lite. Why is it called Lite? Because these mobile devices, they are not as big as the traditional desktops or whatever data center computers you, we might use for training because that takes a lot of, of power. So TF Lite is a very uh, optimized library for embedded devices and mobile devices. Easy to use, of course. Everything is easy to use, right? It's fast and it's really, really small. It's really complex to use. I would be aware if, if I had that. Uh, and the way that it works is that you do your classical training uh, using thousands of computers and TPUs that we'll talk about the next session. And then you'll train your thing. And when you're finished with your model, you convert it into a light format. And that format then on the mobile device through an interpreter gets loaded and it can use, make use of all of the hardware accelerators that are available on the mobile device. For example, on Android, that would be the Android Neural Network API that translates down to the GPU and all the specialized things that will be developed in the future. And on iOS, it will go through, it has the capability of going through Core ML. That's one of the options. You can also execute all the operations on the CPU, of course. If you're not a developer, who's not a developer? I thought so, it's QCon, right? But uh, anyhow, I mean, should you not want to code for some reason one day? We have all of these cool services also in the cloud where you can upload videos and it can automatically detect stuff for you. And in fact, it's pretty cool for developers as well because you can get this kind of meta tagging immediately from videos that you upload. So even though you have no idea what a video contains, if you upload it to the cloud, you can actually get actionable information on how to process that video or, or talk to your user with respect to that. Cloud ML is also super cool. This is state of the art image recognition, detecting cats, dogs, children, trucks, boats, whatever. Uh, you upload just uh, images to this thing and using the latest technologies, we'll look at some of these models in the next speech, uh, you'll actually get a state of the art machine learning models directly without any knowledge of machine learning whatsoever, which is kind of boring because machine learning is quite fun. So, um, so as I said, we got one minute left, get started. Go to tensorflow.org slash get underscore started. Getting started with eager execution, you can open up the collabs there. We're working on making these things collabs as well, so they should appear as collabs. Right now, unfortunately, they're HTML, but we're working hard on fixing that. Thank you so much.